Welcome back, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest tonight is an award-winning journalist whose new series on PBS is called We'll Meet Again. Please welcome Ann Curry. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. In fact, I, I probably should um, tell you something. Maybe you won't hear this, but I actually have a baby crush on you. You have a baby? What does that mean, a baby crush that on you? That means me? I'm married, so I can't really have a crush on you. Okay. But I do, I do have a baby crush on you. In fact, I, my husband's in the audience, and so it's okay, because I think he has a crush on you, too. Okay. Yes. Because he wants you all the I time. I believe that's and called you're... a menage a crush. <laughs> <laughs> no, we watch you all the time, and you're just so uh, devastatingly witty and funny, and you're just oh, as that's... adorable as a puppy dog. I... And we just love you. I... It's so hard not well, to love you. you. Right? Right? Who doesn't have a crush on Stephen I, I don't, I'm not sure why, but this is my favorite interview of all time. <laughs> now, uh, you, you, you've, uh, in, you've done 40, you have a 40-year career. Really? Which I, well, that's Long. what it says right yes, there. Yes, 40, 40 years. years almost, your, yes. Since you were an intern in Oregon. Yes, okay. that's true. And I have a photo here that we've been given okay. of you at all your right. first news job. See that's if right. you can pick her out <laughs> among all the women in this photograph. That's right, that's right. Wow. I was actually the first woman reporter they had ever had. What channel is this? That's um, Channel 10 in Medford, Oregon. And it was really tough because at first uh, uh, there was a man uh, who was a big deal there at the station. He said, you know what? You should not take this job because women have no news judgment and you can't carry the camera. That's what he said to me. And you know what? I, I, I actually felt bad for these guys because when you walk into the newsroom, it actually was, I'm telling, a smoke, a cigar smoke filled room. And I think they were nervous. You know, they were like, this woman's going to come up and she's going to, you know, ch switch us up. She's going to have to make, she's going to make us like mind her P's and Q's. And I really, my father had raised me, he was a military man, to raise me to never cuss. But I realized when I was in this room, I had to calm them down. So I said, no effing worry here. You know, I was like, like starting to cuss with them so that they would be cool. That's when I learned to cuss. Actually learned to cuss. In the newsroom. With, right, and I've never stopped. <laughs> this really looks like an outtake from uh, Anchorman. <laughs> this could be Ron Burgundy's news team there. That's right. I even now, got a perm. You can see I, it's, it was a disaster. My mother from Japan would say, Anna, how come you cut the hair? She had, a very, she had a very thick, wonderful accent. Yes. Anna, how come you cut the hair? You look like a boy. No sexy nothing. -er. Wait, wait. Your mom wanted you to be a sexy news lady. Well, she, well, she wanted, she didn't want me to, she wanted me to marry a rich guy, but she, how come you don't marry a rich guy? How come you go cottage you Stupid spend of money, that's what my mother said. Anyway, but when I was on television, it was like, okay, I gotta deal with this. She sent me a jacket, like, covered in rhinestones, because she wanted me to be, look pretty, and, and she would say, you know, she'd call, I'd, I'd do the news, hi, mom. I'd call her up, you know, mom, how, how do you think that went? You wear too much eyeliner. <laughs> You look like a raccoon. <laughs> you never gonna have a husband. I love you. That was my mom. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> That's lovely. Now, last week you were on uh, with our friends at CBS This Morning. I was. And and uh, they asked you about um, Matt Lauer and the fact that. And it's, it's no secret that I think that Matt Lauer forced you out of the Today Show. Am, do I have that right? Hmm. Okay. Oh, wait. I don't Do wanna... you have a non-disclosure agreement? I do. But I can talk. You can talk? I'm bold. Yes, what, I can talk. What are the words you can't say? Uh... Whisper them in my ear. What are the words you can't say? <laughs> oh, wow. 
That's going to be a short no, interview. No, 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 no. I can, I can talk. No, no. Listen. Well, here's the thing. Is that it, you know, me, I don't want to cause pain, you guys. I don't want to cause, cause pain cause either. Pain. I don't want to cause any pain. But let me just ask you this. When Mr. Uh, Lauer was let go at NBC, were you aware that Twitter blew up with uh, Ann, somewhere Ann Curry, this, this thing? I heard about it this. It said uh, things like this. Somewhere Ann Curry just made her orange juice a mimosa. <laughs> Somewhere Ann Curry is having a nice bowl of frosted karma flakes. Somewhere Ann Curry is drinking more wine than Kathy Moda. <laughs> so, is any of that true? Is any of that true? Was I there wish. any shot? I wish. No? You know, I wish. No. 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 You know, I. I. The truth is that I was raised uh, Catholic by a Buddhist. Oh, okay. So think about the Catholic guilt, which you know something about. I got about, it, baby. Yeah. Mixed with the karma, worries, the intensity of that. It was like a, it was like all of a sudden my brain, like uh, think Game of Thrones, the wall, like it went up, and it was a whole wall of, uh, uh, you can't talk like that, you can't think like that. So I didn't actually get. But to isn't enjoy this it. his karma? That's well, that's a good point, but, <laughs> but I think that. Um, you know, I just, I just don't. I, it, and also, you have to think about the pain. This, is, I mean, a lot of people have suffered. Sure. So, sure. so I haven't had a chance to celebrate for a lot of reasons, and okay. partially because I'm sort of limited. You're a very nice person. Thank you. Well, <laughs> thank you. Do you have a non-disclosure agreement no, about being say, a no, nice I, person? No, I can say thank you. Okay. No, all right, I'm just good. trying to be careful. So. But well, how about this? How about this? Is that now in in you know uh, with the Times Up movement and post you know or in the the, the ongoing me, uh, me Too and the Times Up movement, do you think that uh, one man, however powerful, would be able to force out a seasoned journalist like yourself? Do you think that would be a different outcome now? How about that? Would there be a different outcome in this atmosphere than there was? When um, you left? I think that we're not really done. Fixing the problem, I think we are we are a long way from fixing the problem. It's more than a conversation; it's about action, and it's about not just um, telling people they can't do certain things. It's about changing the dynamic, the power balance within companies, so that women are not seen as people who could never rise to the top. Once we figure that out, we might have a chance to figure this out. Well, I hope so. I hope so too. Well, very quickly, you've, we've got a you got a new show on PBS called "We'll Meet Again." That's I right. understand. I need to bring a tissue to this one. What is "We'll Meet Again"? It's it's a it's basically about world changing events. The people who are caught up in these world changing events, and and their effort to find the one who helped them survive emotionally or physically, and we help you know, them find each other, and when it's possible, we reunite them. And it's very, like very, who? very touching. Well, like uh, Peter, who uh, was looking, uh, he, he survived Kristallnacht in Berlin, looking for the family who helped him in the Shanghai ghetto, which most people don't even realize it was a ghetto in Shanghai, helped him emotionally, like the woman named Sue, who uh, experienced Mount St. Helens. She was a young woman hiking with a bunch of friends when all of a sudden the mountain exploded and she was outside the red zone. Anyway, she had to climb out, and one of her friends, before she um, started trying to go get help, said, please don't leave me. A tree had fallen, broken his hip, he couldn't move. He said, please don't leave me behind. And she promised, I'll come back and bring help. She climbs for hours through the ash, gets out, finally helicopter shows up, and before she uh, uh, gets on the helicopter, she says, I refuse to get on this helicopter unless you promise to turn back and help me find my friends. And the truth is, none of these helicopter pilots needed to be there. They, in other words, they didn't have to be there. They could not be ordered to be there. They were, a lot, large number of them were National Guard helicopter pilots. Uh, this one guy had flown in Vietnam, and he looked at her, and he didn't have to, he had a family, he had kids, and yet, he looked at her and said, don't worry, we'll go get him. And he flew under the ash cloud toward the mountain, even though it was dangerous, to help her find her friends. And in fact, he did help her find her friends. And now she wants to thank him all these years later because when she got off that helicopter, she wasn't thinking. She was obviously so traumatized. And you're not going to believe it. I'm not going to tell anybody else but you <laughs> what happened, that she actually, it changed her life, not only because she survived and because of all that, she actually, in his honor, joined the National Guard and dedicated the, her entire career to trying to be as good and enough a person as he was. 
Can you believe that? Now, and for her, it's, wow. it's, it's just amazing. So you meet these people, I mean, the real life stories are so, you can't make this up. It's, it's amazing. I, I, I'm so moved by it. Uh, I look forward to it. I'm crying now. <laughs> and it was lovely to meet How you. Thank you for being here. You. We'll meet again. Starts tomorrow on PBS and Curry, everybody. Don't forget to click subscribe. It's almost as satisfying as skip ad.